In this video, we'll have a look at vectors in MATLAB. So vectors are the first example of numerical arrays, and they are so-called uh, one-dimensional. So uh, we have one dimension in which the, uh, the array can have many values. Uh, when you, we talk about vectors, we should think of them uh, in an algebraic way. So vectors can be row vectors or column vectors. So we have uh, many elements arranged in a row horizontally uh, or like in a column uh, vertically. So the ways of defining arrays, or in this case uh, vectors, or mart multiple, uh, that depends on what you need. Uh, and basically, uh, the easiest way is, for instance, if you do have like a row, row vector, you just write your elements in a row. But the key point here is that most commonly you will need the square brackets to indicate that you're actually creating an array. So uh, this is the very specific way how you recognize we are talking about arrays. And if you recall, when we were talking about text arrays, uh, there was also the case when I was actually combining uh, text pieces uh, using square brackets. Then we had some X text array, Y text array, uh, there was a B. So once these are individual arrays, they can be combined into one row altogether. And, and this is the same way it works for uh, numeric arrays. So, for instance, if, if I want to create an array of a uh, set of years, 1984, 86, 88, and 90, uh, I just enclose it in square brackets and I can separate them with spaces. That's, that's a sufficient informa information for MATLAB to know that you're creating separate array elements, or you can include commas or command space. Uh, these two lines create exactly the same thing. Uh, then, uh, already something looking slightly familiar to you is also this expression. We have used the colon operator already uh, when working with for loop. And the reason is that exactly uh, this kind of operation actually creates uh, a range of values. So in here, once again, we point uh, the starting point of our array. Then we point uh, the end point, point out, and then we have... Uh, the step which is supposed to be taken in between. Uh, in some cases, for instance, if I have 2 with step 2 and let's say 9, uh, so what happens is that it takes values 2, 4, 6, 8. Next one would be 10. So now even though 9 doesn't fall in here, I mean, it, it will just not be used. And of course, MATLAB will not take that next one, which is already beyond our limit. So it will just stop in on the last one, which fits within the range. But it's not always the value is not always exactly the same as as the one pointed here in the range. Okay, uh, just for formality, let's type it in here. So we have our year. I'll go one. 84, 86, 88, 90. So this was the one way. Uh, the other way was the same, but with commas separating our years. And the last one was uh, with the step, so 1984 with step 2 to 1990. So when I run those three, I will get exactly the same looking arrays for each one of them. All right. Uh, now, as I said, rows, uh, sorry, uh, vectors uh, can be arranged either as rows or as column vectors. And this is very important uh, that you keep track of which case you have, because in algebra uh, you have to be aware of, of the dimensions of your vectors or later matrices in order to do calculations. So 
we can define column vectors as well and I have the example here now uh, so one way is to uh, separate your individual elements with a semicolon because semicolon now in this case once it's uh, included or uh, enclosed in an array it doesn't mean we are hiding results it means we are jumping to the next row so that's the role of semicolon it's it's a different meaning than when it's just at the end of the command line so I will create uh, a column vector first one like this some numbers doesn't really matter with the semicolons And then an alternative way to do the same is that we uh, create a row vector with those values, but we transpose it. So transposition means now you're flipping the dimensions. If something was 1 by n, now it becomes n by 1. So when I run this, you can see now that both our CV1 and CV2 are actually uh, column vectors which is different from a row vector as in here uh, and then of course uh, vectors can have values other than uh, just integers so an example here is we have something with uh, step point uh, one. so there's 1, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7 and these kind of vectors, once you have to create a relatively long one, but with a pattern like this, that the step size is the same between elements, you can also do it using the colon operator and the step in between, with the step also being a fraction, and even more, if in this case you have decreasing values, you just use negative step size. So it means it starts from 1 and then it jumps to the left by 0 0.1, so that creates 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, and so on. So uh, it's relatively flexible in that way. And then we have uh, one more alternative for creating uh, vectors is the function lean space. So this means it is actually creating a linear, it's called linear space again from algebra, the term uh, where you have some interval, there is a and b, so beginning and the end, and then you are uh, dividing this one into equally small pieces, and there is exactly n of them, uh, including a and b, so the starting and ending point. So it actually means that there is a, b, and uh, n minus two elements in between them. Okay, and then once you have uh, a vector, you can operate on it. So, for instance, you can access individual elements. And how it is done, it's uh, once again something that may look familiar. When we were talking about text arrays, uh, we had variable z, which was equal yes, and that was a character array. But we were able to access the individual letters in that array. Uh, by using round brackets and then pointing which index, which place uh, you're trying to access. So now, uh, in a similar way, when you have a numeric array, you can access also individual elements in the same way. So you, you take the vector name, if in this case I called it VTC, let's, let's uh, go here. So I will hide my results here. So I create vector VTC, give it some values, doesn't really matter. Okay, and then I can access uh, individual elements. So, uh, for instance, VCT5. So I have my vector in here, and then uh, I have asked for the fifth element, so one, two, three, four, five, fifth one is indeed eight, so MATLAB shows it to me. 
And now since I have asked for it, so I have kind of given a command to be evaluated, but I haven't pointed where I want to assign this one picked value, then of course it goes to variable ans. I could equally well really put it somewhere, for instance into variable x. Then after running I would get x equal 8. Okay, and then uh, of course uh, things are not as simple as that, uh, or not always. There's always a chance that something will go wrong. And for instance, uh, you can get error like this, index exceeds matrix dimensions. So now what does it mean? It means that you are trying to access an element of your vector which doesn't exist. So it means you're actually pointing location which is not there. Now let's think. Uh, I have a vector defined here and it has eight elements. And now I'm trying to take the fifth element and raise it to power of value of ninth element and then add square root of the sixth element. Now, this is a simple example, so probably we would notice very fast what is wrong. Uh, but in practice, the easiest way to verify what went wrong is if you evaluate those individual pieces uh, one by one, and you will then quickly notice which one is the one which makes problems. So let me take, let me create once again. Uh, Maybe here I will change this to some so 35, 46, 78, 23, 5, 14, 81, and 3. And I was trying to do fifth element power 6 or 9, sorry, 9. And of course, I need capital letters. And there was plus square root of the sixth one. Okay, so now when I run it, I get that. Okay, so now it's uh, index exceeds array bounds. Uh, the, the other error message uh, that's from a different version of MATLAB. But it's the same idea that you are trying to um, access something that is beyond something that exists. So since I had a few of those uh, in my calculation, I, I will now check them one by one. So VCT5, uh, it's 5, and yes, it's 5, sorry, I, I was looking wrong. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, fifth element happens to be 5, so that's okay. Uh, then I have a ninth element taken, and this one tells me uh, that my my size was exceeded. So what I have to do, I have to check the size of my vector. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So if I have 8 elements, but I'm trying to pick up ninth one, then of course MATLAB can get upset, because you're trying to take something that doesn't exist. So this is the problem. I probably have made a mistake, and I wanted to take only the 8th one or some other value. And then, just in case, I could check also this, but since I already counted, there is only 8, so I know the 6th one exists as well. 